page 42, grading and patching. Page 43, signs, traffic control. Page 44, road maintenance. Page 45, construction. Quick question, uh, yes, road maintenance, is that, that's not the patching aspect of it. Would that be the grass cutting and litter control? That's where all the grass, the grass cutting is in the road maintenance budget. Okay. So part of that reimbursement we talked about today, they might fulfill some of this. That's um, correct. That's, that, that's the anticipation. That's, okay. that's what we're hoping. And do a better, more consistent, better job than DOT was doing. Well, the, the good thing that I, I noticed in the contract was that it, it covers litter control almost like a separate entity as well. And with all the legal dumping that we might have taken place, uh, you know, we could be able to get more people out there, even contract people. And you know, it roughly $180,000, we're saying. Page 46, public health. More health. Page 47, extension service. One of the changes that's going to take place in public health that hopefully it'll be a fee for service you get paid for is the school. The school systems are going to require a meningitis vaccine uh, for all children beginning next school year. I believe it's next school year that public health has to be geared up. <coughs> Richard, um, regarding public health, I was told they were going to reduce the services in regard to sickle cell. Um, I'm not. The public health is now a state entity. We have a commissioner at the, public, at the state level that I think has been serving for a year. I think this is her second year. That's the restaurant, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald. And the state has implemented a, a reduction in the amount that they are funding public health based on a schedule. And they have, they have held off on implementing that schedule for two years now, but we fully expect that when that reduction comes, it's going to get hard. And so um, sickle cell is not the only program that has been affected. Our stroke uh, hypertension clinic has had to be shut down, not filling positions. So there's there's more than just that that has been, has been affected. There's been a lot of things that public health is doing. And it's not just for Lowndes County, it's for our 18 county um, South Health region. But, the, but the reduction in services that is coming from public health is, direct, is directly related to state funding reduction. I guess I was wondering what's the other options, what, what the options are, I guess the citizens of sickle cell or the stroke or what have you. Well, I mean, you know, it's like any other thing. I think that Dr. Grove would be probably more qualified to answer the question than, than I, but it's like anybody else. Your primary care physician in the private sector becomes the one who monitors that disease state and, and treats that disease state. That, that's, the, that's the easy answer. That's the simple answer. Yeah. Um, that does not take into consideration <coughs> people that do not regularly um, see a private physician. People that rely on public health as their primary care provider, those are the people most affected by these changes. Well, okay, there's nothing that's done at the state level to fix us. <laughs> right? Page 47, extension service, family services, and library. What is family services, Joe? DFACs. DFACs? Mm -hmm. An extension service here, how does that relate to the cooperative extension service? And that's what that is. And that's mostly state funded, isn't it? That, the University of Georgia? It is, um, it is an entity that is supported primarily by three different sources, University of Georgia, the state, and the local communities. So they are a hybrid um, of all three of those. They're uh, paid by University of Georgia, uh, also Fort Valley, uh, pays for one of the individuals. There are appropriations from the state of Georgia and then 
subsidies um, from the local entity and we have a position that we fund. I think over the other, other thing, I saw something to the fact that they're going to be providing some services for 4 H as well. Is that uh, the contract for aspect? 4 is included in this. Um, and, and 4 H is something that I guess the extension office has adopted. Well, the 4 H is University of Georgia yeah. youth program. So then the extension services involved in that. I was just concerned because at the end of the day, it's, it's a nonprofit as well. I guess 4 H is. Uh, I don't think that's, I don't think it's a, I don't think it qualifies as a nonprofit necessarily. I mean, it's a. It's a national organization that has little splits of different, different states. I guess. Yeah, it's, and it's administered by the University of Georgia. It's, um, what is, are you wanting to, no, I'm to look at reducing the I'm not saying reducing, I'm, I'm just, you know, acknowledging the fact that there are a separate organization. They're not a Georgia oh, okay. organization or even a county organization, but it's a outside organization that they're choosing to fund or assist in funding. Uh, and I think it was right at 29000 I, I, I think, but that was on this one here. Right, there's a, there's a program assistant, which is the position that we pay directly. It's a contracted position, and that's in your contractual services. Joe, was Calvin's position, has it been replaced yet? Yes. I don't know that they have made the announcement. They have made the, uh, they have made the offer to the lawyer. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it was less than what we anticipated. It was a savings. Okay. Now I think Stephanie commented on that. Yeah, it's not state of Georgia contractual services. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your contract with Port Valley and with the University of Georgia. Okay. All right. So I, knew, I just knew it had been vacant for a while. They took some of those <coughs> during that time period. On page 